So you've probably heard of the term nexus, you know, medical nexus, service nexus, whatever nexus brought up in most, if not all my videos, especially on one of the last slides. Well, and you might have also heard it in other people's videos on other channels talking about similar topics that I am talking about. But well, welcome to Battle Buddy Ben. We're going to go over what a nexus is in this episode how, and how you establish one. So let's get started first by saying what is a nexus? So here is a dictionary definition of a nexus. It's pronounced nexus. It means a connection, tie or link or connected series or group. So connected. So we're going to go with the first definition here means connection tie or link so what they're looking for with how the va uses this is your connection between your disability that you're claiming and your time and service and that could be medical it could be service if it's presumptive like you're tied to a particular war zone that you per, you were in and so here we go one connection between your claim disability and your time and service Number two, connection between your direct service connected disability and your secondary claim disability. So that nexus too, they want to see how it's connected. So that's what we're talking about here. A nexus is your connection, the connection between your secondary claim disability to your service connected disability. That's why I said in some of my other videos that the link between a secondary disability and your service connected disability has to be strong. You don't want it weak or something that doesn't make absolute sense. Like my chronic sinusitis is due to my plantar fasciitis. That is weak. They don't relate to each other. But hey, my knee pain and my hip pain and my lower back pain may be related to my chronic plantar fasciitis because I'm walking differently to compensate for the pain, which means I carry my load and weight differently. Now I have back pain, hip pain, and knee pain. That makes more sense. Whereas maybe for chronic sinusitis, you could say, hey, my sleep apnea is because of my chronic sinusitis. That makes more sense. Both are respiratory related. And whereas if I try to connect chronic sinusitis to my plantar fasciitis, it's a little far-fetched. You might have to have a couple of links in there, steps in there to intermediate steps, I mean, but it doesn't really make any sense. So that's why I'm saying it has to make sense. So your nexus between, your connection between the two. If you're finding this information useful and helpful, hit that like and subscribe button and check out my website. Hitting the like and subscribe button allows other veterans and friends and family of veterans who might have questions about what a nexus is to find this video and get their questions and concerns addressed. Also check out my website. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information related to the VA disability claims process on it. It is battlebuddyben.com. Why is a nexus important? So here I'm taking this straight out of Title 38, Chapter 1, Part three, subpart A, ratings and evaluations, service connections. So section 3.303, principles relating to service connection. General service connection connotes many factors, but basically it means the facts shown by evidence or your nexus establishes a particular injury or disease resulting in disability, which occurred coincident with service in the armed forces or if pre-existing such service was aggravated therein. It may be accomplished by affirmatively showing inception or aggravation during service or through an application of statutory presumptions. And then so it goes into saying, you must prove your service connection. So this is a part of the law that says they have to establish a connection between your disability and your time in the armed forces or the military, however you want to call it post-service initial diagnosis of disease. So sometimes you have a disease where the PACAC has, where it doesn't come on or it doesn't present itself during service. It presents itself after service. So that's this is subpart D, that's what it goes over. Service connection may be granted for any disease diagnosis diagnosed after discharge when all the evidence, including the pertinence to service, establishes that the disease which incur incurred in service. Presumptive periods are not intended to limit service connection to diseases, so diagnosed when the evidence warrants direct service connection. 
you can still establish a nexus if you can link back. Like a presumptive claim, such as the PAC Act, can say, because I served in Afghanistan or Iraq between these given dates, I now have chronic sinusitis, chronic rhinitis, COPD, whatever. And they don't have to make a medical connection to your medical records. They'll make a connection via your service records that show that you served in those given areas during that given time period. And so you can still have that diagnosis. You still need the diagnosis. You just can't say, I have these dis these disabilities without any medical evidence, but you're not. Ha it's not in your medical records. It's in your service records, which is then now your nexus. So how do you establish a nexus? First, like I've been saying, your service treatment or medical records. Number two, your medical opinion. And I'll come back to that one. Number three, your private medical records. If you, I have another video that talks about if there's a gap in your time between when you got out of service and you filed your claim, such as 10 years or 20 years, you can use your private medical records to establish that I've had this disability since I got out. And that's how you go back and you kind of make, make uh, generate that story going back. And then your service treatment records for, your service records, I mean, for presumptive claims. So let's go back to number two because I think this one is very important. So you can get a medical opinion that says your your uh, disability is related to your time in service. And so the I wrote down five bullets. These are five different ways somebody could write your medical opinion. And you'll see this if you get the, D the medical opinion DBQ. They have this in there. Or you can go onto my website. I have a what they call an, an independent medical opinion template. And I have these these in there and there's I have it as a checkbox so that it makes it easier for the person filling it out. So the two that you do not want is your disability is not due to your military service. That's the last bullet. And the one right above that one, your disability is not likely due to military service because that's just saying, your disability is not due to your military service and it, there is almost no doubt for that. The top three there, you're obviously the best one to have is your disability is due to your military service or is due to military service. The next one is it is most likely due to military service. And then the one that gives the veteran the benefit of the doubt, which is 50-50, is the third bullet is at least if not likely due to military service. That is the 50-50. We don't really know, we think it is, but we're not sure. So we're gonna say this and that the VA will give you the benefit of the doubt. And then private medical records, service records, these are how you establish a nexus. You can use all of these in one or you can have them separate. I would say get at least two of these and then you, you have a better case of proving service connection. Secondary ones, you want at least your private medical records and your medical opinion, as well as maybe your service treatment records to prove that, hey, I had this service connected one, now I have this secondary one. This is how it's linked. This is that nexus, the connection, and then it makes your secondary case stronger. What else do you need? Again, I go over this a lot in all my videos, just as a reminder for everybody. You need that current diagnosis from an authorized medical professional. Number two and three, you need that nexus. You need that description of the in-service occurrence that resulted in the diagnosis or a link to a service-connected disability for a secondary one. That official letter saying a medical nexus from a diagnosing medical professional that states your disability was caused by the in-service occurrence unless you already had that written into your, your treatment records, which is the, in case your official letter or medical nexus. Your last one, statements in support of claims, always include it. Include buddy letters if you have them. Your statement is just telling the VA, this is how my disability is impacting my ability to have gainful employment and or a normal social life. If you have any comments or questions about what a nexus is and how to establish one, please place them in the comment section or send me an email at contact at battlebuddyben.com. If you like what you viewed, hit that like and subscribe button and let others know about this video. Check out my website. I have a lot of great links, templates, and information on it. The website is battlebuddyben.com. It is also on the screen. 
Keep working hard and good luck with your claims.